Hello and welcome to this video on trigonometric substitution. Before you watch this, you should make sure that you're familiar with integration, but also the regular substitution method. To find the integral of a function, you will need to find an antiderivative of that function. But this is not always easy to do. Trigonometric substitution is a type of substitution which will help us evaluate certain types of integrals. And it usually works best with those functions that involve a square root of a quadratic function. Let's have a look at how this is going to work. Trigonometric substitution is a type of substitution that involves a change of variable from x to theta. And we would usually use it when you have an integrand or function that you're trying to integrate which involves one of these three types of square roots. If it involves the square root of a squared minus x squared, you would normally substitute x is equal to a times sine theta. If it involves the square root of a squared plus x squared, you would substitute x equals to a tan theta. And if it, your expression involves square root of x squared minus a squared, you would substitute x equals to a secant theta. We will make each of these substitutions on these corresponding intervals that are listed here. And the reason for this is that we would like our change of variable to be invertible, so that later on we can change back to the variable x. However, the interval corresponding to secant theta could be slightly different, depending on which textbook you're using. Uh, regardless, the identities that are listed here are the identities that will be used to simplify these expressions. And so we can use these trigonometric identities to eliminate the square roots, usually. Here is our first example. We would like to integrate the square root of x squared minus 4 divided by x, dx. And to do this, we should uh, note that the square root of x squared minus 4 is square root of x squared minus 2 squared. So in this case, a is equal to 2. And therefore, we should use the substitution x equals to 2 times secant theta. We're using secant theta because we have x squared minus a number in the square root. This means that dx will be 2 times secant theta times tan theta, d theta. That's just the derivative of secant theta where theta is in one of these intervals. And as I mentioned earlier, these intervals might change depending on which textbook you're using. But regardless, we can simplify the square root of x squared minus 4 in the same way. We would replace x by 2 times secant theta. Then this would simplify, and we can factor out a 4, which means we have the square root of 4 times tan squared theta. This is because secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to tan squared theta. Now we get 2 times the absolute value on tan theta. But notice that on these specific intervals, tan theta is positive. So therefore, we don't need to include the absolute values. So we've simplified square root of x squared minus 4 to become 2 tan theta. So let's see, summarize what we have so far. So we made a substitution x equals to 2 secant theta, which means that dx is equal to 2 secant theta tan theta d theta. We also found that simplifying square root of x squared minus 4, we get 2 times tan theta. Now let's insert all of this into the original integral. So square root of x squared minus 4 becomes 2 tan theta. x in the denominator becomes 2 times secant theta. And instead of dx, we have 2 secant theta tan theta d theta. Now we can simplify this by cancelling 2 times secant theta, and we're left with 2 tan squared theta d theta. We would take out the 2, the constant, out front of the integral, and we use the trigonometric identity to simplify tan squared theta to become secant squared theta minus 1, because each of these is going to be easier to integrate than tan squared theta. We can now change this into two integrals, and we can integrate each one. The integral of secant squared theta is tan theta, and the integral of 2 times d theta is just 2 theta. And of course, we have plus a constant. So now we have that the integral is equal to 2 times tan theta minus 2 theta plus c. Now, all that's left to do is to change back to x. Remember that the substitution we made was x equals to 2 times secant theta. We can draw a triangle where this is true. So in other words, secant theta has to be x over 2. Or another way of saying that is that cosine theta is 2 over x. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate the third side, which is the square root of x squared minus 4. 
Now, reading from this triangle, we can see that theta is equal to secant inverse of x over 2, and also tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent, gives us square root of x squared minus 4 divided by 2. Now, insert this information into the answer that we had, and we get tan theta is replaced by square root of x squared minus 4 over 2, and theta is replaced by secant inverse of x over 2. Simplifying this, we get square root of x squared minus 4 minus 2 secant inverse x over 2 plus a constant. And this is the final answer. Here's our next example. This time we have a definite integral from 1.5 to 3 of dx over x squared square root of 9 minus x squared. So again, we have an integrand that involves the square root of a quadratic function. Notice that square root of 9 minus x squared is equal to 3 squared minus x squared. So in this case, a is equal to 3. And because we have a number minus x squared, this means we should use sine theta. So let x equal to 3 times sine theta. Differentiating this, we see that dx is equal to 3 cosine theta d theta. And the interval we're working in with is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now let's simplify that square root. So instead of x, we have 3 times sine theta. Multiply out those brackets and then factor a 9. We see that 1 minus sine squared theta is the same as cos squared theta. Taking the square root of a square becomes absolute value. So we have the absolute value of 3 uh, cos theta. But on this particular interval, cosine theta is positive. So that means that we don't need those absolute values. So let's summarize what we have so far. We made a substitution x equals to 3 sine theta, which means dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. And the square root of 9 minus x squared, we just saw that that simplifies to become 3 cos theta. Also, we need to change these limits of integration to correspond to the new variable theta. So if x is equal to 1.5, this means that 1.5 is equal to 3 sine theta. So sine theta is equal to a half. And on the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, this means that theta has to be pi over 6. Similarly, if x is equal to 3, that means 3 is equal to 3 sine theta, so sine theta is equal to 1. On the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, this means that theta has to be pi over 2. So now we have found all the details of this substitution that we are trying to make, and we also found the new limits of integration. So let's insert all of this into the original integral. The new limits of integration are pi over 6 and pi over 2. dx has become 3 cosine theta d theta. And x has been replaced by 3 sine theta. And also we saw that the square root of 9 minus x squared is equal to 3 cosine theta. Now all of this simplifies to become just d theta over 9 sine squared theta. And another way of writing this is we can take out the 1 over 9 because it's a constant and 1 over sine squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. That's just the definition of cosecant theta. The integral of cosecant squared theta is equal to negative cotangent theta. So now all that's left is to insert those values and evaluate cotangent of pi over 2, subtract cotangent of pi over 6. Cotangent of pi over 2 is equal to 0, and cotangent of pi over 6 is equal to square root of 3. That's because tangent of pi over 6 is equal to 1 over root 3. Now simplifying this, we get the final answer of square root of 3 over 9. Let's do one more example. So in this case, we have the square root of 4x squared plus 9. We can think of this as 2x all squared plus 3 squared. This means that 2x, which is the part in the, in the bracket, should be replaced by 3 times tan theta. And we have tan theta because we have something involving x squared plus a number. Another way of writing this is that x is equal to 3 over 2 tan theta. And this means that dx is 3 over 2 secant squared theta d theta. Where the interval corresponding to this tan theta substitution is minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So to simplify the square root, we have to replace x by 3 over 2 tan theta. We can simplify this, becomes 9 tan squared theta plus 9. And if you factor out a 9, we get tan squared theta plus 1, which we know is equal to secant squared theta. So we get 3 times the absolute value of secant theta. 
but on the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, secant theta is positive. So this is equal to just 3 times secant theta. So now we are ready to do the actual substitution. We want to insert all these details into the original integral. So dx is the same as 3 over 2 secant squared theta d theta, x is equal to 3 over 2 tan theta, and we saw earlier that the square root it simplifies to become 3 secant theta. We can simplify this by cancelling one of the copies of secant theta. Also, we can take all the constants and put them at front of the integral. To see what else we can cancel, let's try to rewrite each of these as expressions involving only sine and cosine theta. So secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, and tan squared theta in the denominator becomes cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Now we can see that some of these parts cancel, and we get just cotangent theta times cosecant theta. And the constants out front simplify to be 2 over 9. The integral of cotangent theta times cosecant theta is negative cosecant theta. So now we have that the integral is equal to negative 2 over 9 cosecant theta plus c. And the final step is to substitute back to x. So remember that the substitution we made was 2x equal to 3 tan theta. We can draw a triangle where this is true. So in other words, tan theta is 2x divided by 3. We can let the opposite side be 2x and the adjacent side 3. Then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, which will be the square root of 4x squared plus 9. Then cosecant theta is the same as 1 over sine theta, which is the same as hypotenuse over opposite. So looking at the triangle, we can see that this is the square root of 4x squared plus 9 over 2x. We can insert this into our answer to the integral and simplify to get the negative of square root 4x squared plus 9 over 9x plus a constant. And this is the final answer to this integral. So now we've seen examples of all three types of trigonometric substitution, and we've also seen examples of definite integrals as well as indefinite integrals. But it's also important to know when to use trigonometric substitution in the first place. I think the next slide will hopefully help you get an idea of, of when to use it. Here we have a number of examples of integrals, and all of these can be solved using trigonometric substitution. Notice that all of them involve a square root of a quadratic function, even that those that maybe don't look like it at first. So for example, 25 plus x squared to the power of half, that is of course a square root. Also 4 minus x squared to the power of 3 over 2, that is also a square root that has been disguised slightly. Notice that the square root can also be uh, raised to a certain power. For example, here we have square root of 2x squared minus 9 to the power of 5. Uh, this can still be solved using trigonometric substitution. Also, some of these involve a coefficient in front of the x squared, and we saw an example of how to deal with that. In the example where we have square root of x squared minus 4x plus 7, you would start by first completing the square of this and then using trigonometric substitution. So when should you use which type of trigonometric substitution? Well, in the first column we have a number minus x squared, which means we should use sine theta. In the middle column we have a number plus x squared, or similarly x squared plus a number, it would be the same thing. All of these we would use tan theta. And in the third column we have x squared minus a number. And here it would work best to use secant theta. Here are a few remarks of things to keep in mind. Always check for an easier strategy before proceeding with trigonometric substitution, because sometimes some integrals can be solved using regular substitution, and that might be faster. Remember that you always need to express your final answer of an indefinite integral using the variable given in the question. So if the question is stated in terms of x, this means that you need to substitute back to x in your final answer. Drawing triangles is usually the easiest way to substitute back to the original variable. So remember that when you're studying integration, it's important to know how to use each of the different methods really well. But it's also important to know when to use which technique. Trigonometric substitution is a fairly long and complicated method, so it might be better to consider simpler methods, such as regular substitution first, and only use trigonometric substitution if you really have to. 
Please have a look at our practice problems and remember that most of them will most likely require trigonometric substitution, but some of them might be possible to solve using simpler methods. Good luck.